Hello, welcome back to the course on Additional Processing for Music Applications. This week we're talking about sound transformations. And for example, in the previous uh, demonstration class, we talked about morphing, and in particular about how to use the short time for a transform to morph the qualities of two different sounds. Now, in this uh, second uh, class, I want to talk about time scaling. Therefore, about how to change the duration of a sound and uh, basically then modify the, the length of a particular uh, sound fragment. So let's uh, start by uh, using uh, the possibilities of audacity uh, for this uh, type of transformation. Let's start from uh, this sound. This is the or orchestral sound that we have in uh, SMS Tools uh, directory. <laughs> And now in, uh, in the effects uh, menu of Audacity, uh, there is uh, quite a few of uh, transformation possibilities and uh, even uh, there is uh, the possibility for extending uh, these transformations by external plugins and uh, you can find many uh, available online. But uh, let's uh, uh, focus on very few of these transformations that relate with uh, changing uh, the duration of a, of a sound. And the simplest one is, uh, for example, this one, it says change speed. This is a very simple algorithm that the only thing it does is change the reproduction speed, basically. So it changes how the samples are read and therefore uh, reproduce. And of course, the effect of this is that it modifies not just the time, but it modifies the frequencies of, uh, of the sound. So let's listen to that same uh, orchestral uh, sound, but changed by, for example, uh, well, if we put it at zero, it, there would not be any change. And for example, let's change it by 30%. So this will speed up the, the reproduction of the sound by 30%. Okay, clearly we see that the sound is now shorter, and now we can play it. Okay, so this is the standard effect of uh, reading uh, in a disc or uh, uh, and changing the speed of, uh, of reproduction of an analog disc or of a, a tape, and that can be done in, uh, in digital media. But clearly, uh, this is uh, it's okay, but it's not uh, that interesting in the sense that we are uh, manipulating not just the duration, but the whole quality of the sound. So more interestingly, when we talk about time scaling, what we normally are referring is to be able to change the duration of the, of the sound without changing the quality of the sound, without changing the frequencies that are present in the sound. And within um, the Audacity, there is a few uh, algorithms that do that. The most uh, sophisticated one that I know of uh, is uh, this one that says sliding time scale and pitch shift. Okay, and this algorithm performs both tempo change or time change and pitch change and it uses a sinusoidal model. In fact, it uses a sinusoidal model very similar to the one that uh, we have been presenting in class. Uh, and you can, of course, look at the code of this algorithm uh, on, the, on the Audacity website. You, you have access to the source code of that. The, the major difference, which is an important one, is that this uh, sinusoidal model is based on a subband type of processing. So it does sinusoidal modeling by splitting the whole sound in octaves and modeling every octave uh, with a, a different analysis synthesis approach. So the quality is a little bit better than what we can do in the algorithm that we have been developing in class. So let's listen to that. And uh, it easily uh, can be controlled in time. So here, for example, the control of this uh, algorithm can be done in a way that we have an initial tempo change as a percentage and a final tempo change. So for example, what we can do is start slower. So let's say, okay, let's start, let's, uh, let's say 20% uh, or 22% slower and let's finish by speeding up. So let's, uh, for example, end up with a 30% uh, speed uh, increase. 
Okay, but uh, remember, these we are not changing the reading of the samples, the time domain samples. This is done using the sinusoidal model, so therefore uh, resynthesizing the sinusoids but at different speeds while maintaining the pitch of the sinusoids. So let's uh, analyze this. This is quite fast, in fact, it's a very efficient algorithm implemented in C. So now uh, we are done and we have changed uh, the, the duration. Well, it's a time varying duration, so let's listen to that. Okay, so we have a time duration and clearly the pitch or the frequencies have not changed. The sound has changed in duration, has sped up, the tempo has increased, but not the frequencies. And that's a pretty good algorithm. There is some more sophisticated uh, ones, but this is a pretty decent one uh, that uh, can perform good uh, time scaling algorithms. So now let's go to the, our own uh, implementation. So let's go to the GUI of uh, transformations that we have. And let's uh, uh, go to the sine model. Okay, and let's go to uh, the, for example, a sound. Let's use the piano sound. Okay. Of course, now this algorithm we have to decide the parameters. So in the Audacity implementation, everything kind of it's a, it's a black box. So uh, and it does pretty good. Uh, it chooses uh, the best parameters for this type of uh, transformation. Here we have to choose the parameters. So uh, we first have to choose the analysis parameters of the sinusoidal model. It's a piano sound, uh, it's, a, well, it's a harmonic uh, sound, but this in the sinusoidal model, this is not an issue. Let's, uh, we have to make sure that we distinguish the, the, the peaks of the spectrum uh, enough so that we can build uh, sinusoids out of that. So let's uh, start maybe with a humming window, uh, 800, maybe let's increase this uh, a little bit, let's put uh, a thousand um, uh, samples of the window size, the threshold minus 90, maybe let's do even more, minus 100, the minimum uh, sinusoidal duration, well let's leave it like that, maximum number of signs, we can put as many, uh, for example 200, so we, we really do a lot of sinusoids. And, uh, well, let's uh, leave uh, maybe this a little bit higher, the offset, so we allow frequencies to change a little bit more. And let's first do the analysis resynthesis of the piano. Okay, um, here is the, the analysis, the sinusoidal analysis that it, I have performed, and the resynthesis. Let's listen to the resynthesis. Well, uh, let's first listen to the, the original sound. and then the resynthesized one. Okay, it does a pretty good job, so that's a good starting point. Now we can apply the transformations, and in this interface we can do scaling and uh, of the frequencies and of the time. So let's uh, not do any frequency scaling. So for not doing any frequency scaling, let's say that at time zero, we just put the value of one, and at time one, we put the value of one. So there is no frequency change. And in the time, we have, uh, we can put uh, uh, the time scaling operation. So for example, we can say at time zero, just start at zero. And for example, at the end, and we can just normalize to say one, let's uh, slow down by a factor of two, for example. So this will slow down quite a bit more than we were doing before. So this will stretch the sound to twice as long. So let's see what it does. Okay, so this is the stretch sound. So this is uh, much longer. The original sound was around four seconds. Now it's eight seconds. And here we see the sinusoids that, of course, uh, since they have been uh, stretched, uh, we see a little bit more of a mess here because we see uh, twice as long and uh, therefore more compact type of representation. Let's listen to this uh, stretch sound. Okay, that's pretty good. And of course we can do, with this interface, we can make uh, changes that vary not just from beginning to end, but for example, we can say, okay, at the beginning, let's start at zero. Let's put that in the middle, 
let's speed up by uh, by uh, 50 percent so it's going to be at uh, 0 0.25 and at the end let's uh, for example leave it uh, well we can just leave it uh, so that it's a little bit longer so it's 1.3 okay so now we can apply the transformation okay so this has done a time varying uh, time stretching and the beginning has uh, sped up and the ending has slowed down so let's listen to that okay so that's uh, pretty good and that's a quite interesting transformation and there is quite a lot of opportunities to do interesting things here Again, this is different from the algorithm that uh, Audacity includes, but the basic concept sinusoidal model is the same. The only thing is there it does it a little bit more complicated, and of course the implementation is in C and is uh, a little bit more efficient. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, we have uh, talked about uh, time scaling and use uh, two algorithms, uh, both the Audacity and the one available in the SMS tools. So hopefully that has given you a view of the potential of the sinusoidal model for time scaling operations. And that's a very interesting uh, transformation that is very much used uh, for many uh, types of applications. So next uh, class, we're going to be talking about uh, changing the pitch of uh, the sound. So that's a very complementary operation to uh, changing the time. So I hope to see you on next class. Bye bye.